Well hi folks, it's Cliff here from Down Under. In this video I'm going to finish making these Thread Express spindles. There'll be various machining operations and I'll have a bit of a discussion as well. Hopefully not too much verbal diarrhea. Cheers. So I'm roughing out the ER32 of the tungsten carbide boring bar but I prefer to use high speed steel for the finishing tool because I can lap it and it holds a really good edge, a bit of high grade, high cobalt, high speed steel. I set the top slide at 8 degrees initially but that's unlikely to be highly accurate. Finally, tap it a little bit either side and juggle the angle by a few thou until you get a really good transfer of bearing blue and also no apparent rocking around this periphery edge or no gap so it's really steady in there and that's checking that you've got a true match and not just um, dialed it on, on your top slide dial. Well let's check it for concentricity. I put on a 6mm collar to an ER32 nut. Put a dial indicator on there. That's really good, but of course I'm also checking the collet and the nut itself. They happen to be good also in this case. Um, I bought in a couple of extra collet nuts, so I guess I'll try those as well now. Okay, let's te test this nut to see if it's, it's okay. I mean the potential is if they're made inaccurately, they can bias the collet off sideways. Um, you know, in theory, um, the concentricity relies on an accurate nut and collet and ER bore and thread. They all have to be concentric. So if any one of them is out, it will likely throw it off. Now, this seems to be fine. It's not pushing it over. It's within a micron or so, pretty impressive really. Um, it's not really branded, but seems to be uh, without serious error. And finally setting up the other end to cut the thread for the spindle bearing thrust nut. Because I'm gripping it in a three jaw, I'm checking that it's running true. I want the center to support it, but not to push it into alignment. So I probably don't need to go through the stages of machining for this end, it's basically the same as the other end, um, using the same tools, the same tool offset system, and I'm going to finally cylindrically grind those bearing diameters on my cylindrical grinder. So that's the final bit of the turning, it's just the thread on this end. Same tool offsets, same procedure, little localized drawing. These are all good habits and disciplines to get into and if you get a job again, you know, the customer wants another one, you just pull your drawing out of your folder, that customer's folder, and you can quickly 
replicate what you did last time without having to go through all the long-winded process of finding out all the details. Well that's those five parts, those five Thread Express spindles finished now. I've really enjoyed making them. It's a reasonably efficient way to produce parts in a small batch production of about five. Um, obviously the prices still would be too high, um, not suitable for long term supply, but a lot more efficient than making one. Um, you start to get some of the benefits from scale and repetition by making say five parts but I wouldn't want to scale it up and make large quantities I've done that plenty of times in the past making 50 or 100 or 200 highly complicated parts it's just a really big project and it's really tedious you know you need you really need a big high-end uh, CNC cylindrical grinding shop where you can thread grind and mass produce the parts in runs of several hundred in order to get the price down um, and I just can't do that type of work and it would be far too tedious to do it manually so this is not a viable product to supply commercially I can make a few runs of five you know um, if there's demand there, perhaps a few times over, uh, but I can't get the price down low and it would be too tedious to attempt to make them long term in big quantities. I know some of you are thinking, well just get them in from China, send the drawings to China and find a good supplier or you know some third world country and um, yeah I've done that myself in the past and it isn't an easy process. There are some really good manufacturers in China with very good quality work and when I first received parts like this in the past and studied them I've just been blown away by the quality and the price and studied them and just absolutely amazed how they could be made for such a low price. You know and of course the Chinese have um, government and council subsidy of raw materials, of the lease of their machines, of power, of, of um, and their wages are very low. And there, there's probably other incentives too and control over their exchange rate which allows them to make parts for ridiculously cheap prices. But the problem is you sell out eventually and you get another order and they've got a change of staff um, or they've got too much work on and they make a little mistake and they ship you 200 parts that have got an error hidden inside them and you might miss it initially but eventually when you find this deep-seated error in concentricity or something it just can't be fixed you've got a real problem you try contacting them and they don't want to take responsibility for it and they've got a different manager and it's just a nightmare. Honestly, that type of admin nightmare is something I don't want to get involved in. There's plenty of other types of people, different personalities that can handle that type of stress better than me. That's not my thing. I've tried that. I've been there. I've done that. And I go back to making the parts myself where I can control the quality control and just have a small business with a small amount of income. But in this case it's not even a business. These spindles and other parts if I make them for Thread Express is a hobby, a labour of love, something I really enjoy. I may make some more in the future for other folk. We'll just see how it goes. Let me know in the comments what you think about this subject. It's fascinating to me. Thanks for watching that video. If you found something useful there, please like consider subscribing if you're not already subscribed just 
checking that you're aware that Presso in Australia, Mark Pressling, has currently got a build series. He's building his own Thread Express. You can jump across to his channel. I'll try and remember to put a link in the description below. Mark Pressling, Building Thread Express. Stay tuned and I'll catch you next time.